Each week, we welcome to our NFG stage one of our highly talented members or special guests with something designed to help you and your business. Our next guest is a true Norfolker through and through. Brought up in the rest of the city, not far from the airport, she hasn't actually travelled that far during, the, um, during her working life, although her career has took her very, very deep into the world of marketing on both agency and client side, beginning nearly a quarter of a century ago. After cutting her teeth while at a consultancy in Norwich, or Norwich, using a single syllable, as the locals might say, at the turn of the millennium, she gained a keen interest in marketing and even became a fully qualified chartered marketeer. Back in 2005, she began at Norwich Union, or Aviva, the rite of passage for many Norfolk folk. Spending nearly a decade refining her marketing talents before moving more into SEO, pay-per-click and social media marketing to refine a strategy for how to attract potential prospects towards business websites. Three years ago, she took these well-oiled skills and created her own marketing company to try to smash a hole in the common obstacle of most businesses, that of creating awareness to the wider world. Focus on driving traffic using SEO, among other tools, to organically build up an online presence. Today, she talks to us about how to maximize the visibility of your website with a talk very sharply titled DIY SEO for Small Business Owners. We bring to you Bex Houston. Good morning, Bex. Good morning. Thank you for the introduction. What a great intro. Blimey. Thank you so much, um, Peter Bussey, for putting me forward to do this. I like to be pushed out of my comfort zone a bit. Okay, let's see if we can get the, the slides moving. Here we go. So just a very, very, very quick bit about me, because uh, it's not about me, it's about SEO. I'm Bex Houston, been in marketing for 24 years, fully qualified and chartered. Um, got a small digital marketing agency based in Norwich, and we, as mentioned, we specialise in SEO for small businesses. Okay, so what am I going to cover? Well, it's going to be um, really what you guys can do for your own SEO. So this is not about getting business for me. This is about helping you guys out. All right, so the tips are all relatively easy to implement yourself. And I'll only recommend tools that are free to use so you can keep your costs down. Okay, first tip, know what you want your website to achieve. So it's really important to have smart goals for your, for your site, know where you are now and where you want to be. Then you can figure out how you're gonna get there. So for example, um, what's your conversion rate? So figure out what it is you, that you actually want somebody to do. Do you want them to go onto your website and make an inquiry, um, maybe through the, um, chat function? Do you want them to submit a form, email you, call you? Have that in mind and have an idea of numbers in mind as well. How many visitors do you want to get per month? Would you like more? How many more and by when? What do you want people to do when they visit your site? Visit a specific page? Download your white paper? If you want to make online sales, how many do you want to make? If you want leads to follow up, how many do you need and by when? Okay, so once you've got your target in mind, you need to understand who your customer is. So to be able to resonate with your customers, you need to think and communicate like them, create an avatar or a pers persona. This will help you when creating content for them. You need to understand who you are selling to, what style of language they use, and then use that language on your website. What are their challenges? Why do they buy your product? Who are they? What communication channels do they use? For example, young people like WhatsApp and other people like live chat, older people like email and the phone. Give them what they want. So multiple ways of being able to speak with you and contact you. Understand why they buy your product. And then what are their challenges? Know and answer this. Know what their need is and answer it on your website. Okay. Next thing is keyword research. So keywords are the words or phrases that your target audience searches for when looking for products and services or when trying to solve a problem in search engines like Google and Bing. 
Search engines like Google will match up the most relevant content to the search of their user and provide the most accurate results from websites, blogs and images. So before you start writing tons of copy for the website, take some time to understand what your prospective customers are typing into search engines so that you can match your products or services with their queries. For example, um, I worked with a company in Kings Lynn. They did uh, what they called under counter water filters. And that was what they wanted their page to be optimized for because that was what their product was called. I did keyword research, nobody was looking for that term, but shed loads of people were looking for under sink water filter, quick change, and they started getting loads of traffic. It was as easy as that. So there are tons of free tools that you can use to do your keyword research. One is called Uber Suggest. And then you've got Google's Keyword Planner, which is part of the um, Google Ads platform, completely free to use, and that's what we use. So you need to allocate an appropriate keyword to each of your service pages. Make sure you don't use the same keywords twice on two different pages. If not, you'll get something called cannibalization, and that's where your pages compete against each other and you actually reduce the um, ranking strength, uh, strength of those pages. Okay. Cool, I'm flying through these, tell you. Um, I have a feeling we're gonna have a lot of questions. Oh, my picture hasn't loaded. All right, so your next one is um, create excellent title tags and meta descriptions. So page titles and meta descriptions are short pieces of HTML code found in every web page. They show the title of the web page and its description, similar to the title and blurb on the front of the back of a book. They tell me what the book or page is about before you open it or click the link. Include the allocated keywords to the title tags and meta description. Add some more compelling copy to the meta description. So your meta description is the paragraph of text that people skim read before they decide whether they want to click on your result or your competitors. And then include some sales messages too, like award winning or free delivery. All right, then you need to think, what are your competitors doing? To be better than your competitors, you need to know what they're up to. If you want to beat them, then you need to know. So for example, if they've got 10 backlinks to a page, you need 20. If they've got a thousand words on the page, you need 1500. If they have a video, you've got to have a video. If their site is fast, yours needs to be faster. You get the idea. All right, next one is, your website is never finished. Right, your mum likes it, your mates like it, you stop there. No, you don't, you have to keep evolving it. If you don't keep evolving it, Google will see it as a neglected website. Write excellent copy. Um, you, to evolve your pages, maybe you'll write new paragraphs or add testimonials or internal links to other pages, add imagery. All right, blogging. So um, blogging, not waffling. Please just don't just write blogs just for the sake of writing blogs. Do it from um, a search perspective. You're writing for the end user. You're not writing for SEO, but you are writing for the purpose of answering a question that somebody is asking on search. Unless you're gonna um, point traffic to that blog from social media or from email marketing, then it's, not, it's just not gonna get found. All right, so as an SEO specialist, I like blogs that attract visitors to the site. Do a bit of keyword research. What are people looking for in your industry? What questions do they have? Answer them and add a call to action at the bottom. Then once the visitor is brought to the page to find the answer to the question, you can then go on to find out, they can then go on to find out more about your company and potentially make a purchase. Alrighty, drive traffic to your website. So SEO is not just about the stuff on the website, it's bringing more traffic to your website as well. So use your social media channels, use um, Google Ads. Google Ads are, are a great way of um, making your website found in search before the SEO can take effect. All right, another biggie is fix the errors. Um, broken links, slow pages. You can use the Google um, speed test to see if you've got any speed issues. Um, pages that are not mobile friendly, there's a mobile friendly test, just Google it. And duplicated content, duplicated metadata. 
make sure that your your images are optimized this is a biggie people quite often just take pictures on their phones and upload them to the website um that's going to slow your site down and in fact that page just will not be displayed by google it's so important um Orphan pages, so people quite often create pages, but you can't link to them, you can't navigate to them through the site. Um, so the easiest way to check your site is just to go on it and click through it. The amount of times I say to people, oh, just go on to such and such page on their site, and they'll be like, oh, that's out of date, and oh, I haven't been on here for a while. Just, you know, diarise it, just go onto your site, click all the links, make sure they're all working, make sure your content is up to date. Can you add any new testimonials? Can you update it? Go and don't forget to go onto it on a on a mobile phone as well. This mobile optimization is essential. Um, I could talk all day, but all day about errors. All right, use SEO friendly URLs. So don't use underscores. Use hyphens because Google can actually understand the text within your URLs, your web addresses. Um, include the keywords for that page as well. That's another ranking factor. And Keep your addresses as short as possible. And you know, so sometimes you see like um, you know, myurl.co.uk forward slash question mark um, 33729 exclamation mark. That's not a friendly URL. So if you've got any of those, then um, have a word with your web developer. Or if you've got a WordPress site, you can actually re replace those yourself. All right, another ranking factor. So somebody earlier mentioned about offsite SEO. It's two sides to SEO on site kind of speaks for itself is all the stuff you do to the website itself. Offsite is everything you do to increase the um, your presence across the internet and also to build your reputation by building links back to your web your website. So think about how you can build those inbound links. You know, maybe do you do a um, testimonial for some of your suppliers? Hey, I've been working with XYZ company for five years, always been great, wouldn't hesitate to recommend them. That's a testimonial they'll be happy to put on their website with a link back to your website. That's a link, you get the idea. Okay, Google My Business cannot be underestimated. It is such a powerful tool. Oh, my picture hasn't loaded again. Okay, so if your business is registered, you will have a listing, just claim it. If not, it's very easy to register. So you'll need to verify that you are who you say you are. They do this by sending you a physical postcard with a code on it to your postal address. Easy peasy, just go onto Google My Business, put your um, code in, you're verified. You'll then need to possibly put a piece of code onto your website um, so that it, the two can kind of talk to each other. Most of the time you don't need to. Um, so then, to be found in the map pack, um, you know, sometimes you might put, I don't know, painter, painter Nor Norwich, I'm Norwich, so I'd put Norwich. Um, and then you get a map, don't you, with loads of listings. That is so powerful, a huge amount of people click on those. So if you can get listed in there, then why wouldn't you? So all you need to do is keep that listing up to date. Keep it well populated. You can put posts on there, you can put videos, you can put photographs. You need to be um, pointing your happy customers there to leave you a recommendation, a testimonial. Um, the more you have, the more positive reviews you have, the further up the rankings you'll get and the further up that map pack recommendations you'll get as well. Alrighty, next one is to measure. Oh, my pictures haven't loaded again. All right, so we spoke earlier about having clear objectives about your website, but these are pointless unless you measure your site's performance and see how you're prog progressing towards your targets. So one of the things that we'll use for measurement is um, Google Analytics. So Google Analytics is a massive platform, but really all you need to do is see maybe how your visitors are finding you, how long they're spending on your site, where they came from, what pages they visited, um, and then keep an eye on those month on month and see, you know, are, am I getting more visitors? Am I getting more people from around my area? Are they seeing me from further afield? Um, best thing to do with Google Analytics is to just get in there and have a really good click around. You can't break it. Um, and then the other one is Google Search Console. So if you're really serious about doing your own search engine optimization, then Google Search Console will tell you what Google thinks about your website from a search perspective. And once again, you can't break it, just jump in and have a good look around. 
All right, there we go. SEO, that's like 25 years of learning SEO in a few seconds, it felt like. Does anybody have any questions for me?